one of the most important things you need to consider when you are reassessing your relationship with the homosexual squatter is that you cannot bear their burden. You just cannot do it. Whatever burden that they had prior to meeting you is something that they had prior to meeting you. Whatever trauma that they had prior to meeting you is something that they had prior to meeting you. You can't bear that bread. You cannot bear that burden. You have your own. You have your own traumatic childhood situations and uh, relationships with your parents and siblings and and job situation. You got your own burden. So you cannot bear the burden of a homosexual squatter. Only that person can carry their own load. Only that person can decide when to let go of that load. Only that person can choose to move forward. You cannot walk out their steps for them. You cannot walk out their steps for them. If you think about um, like the visual of two people walking down the road, right? One, both have, have bags on their back, right? And then one of the people says, oh, oh, I'm tired. Well, this bag is heavy. And then the other person says, okay, well, my bag is not that heavy. Let me go on ahead and carry yours for a good hour or something like that. And the person so quickly gives you, gives the other person a bag. Not even thinking about it or anything like that. Not even thinking, say, I don't want you to hold my bag. It's my bag, you know, uh, or, or even maybe transferring some items in the bag into the other person's bag. No, they just take off that load and give it to the other person. Now, even though your bag is not that heavy, now with wearing their bag on your back, it seems like both bags are heavier than they should be because that's the way it is. Both bags are heavier than they should be because that's not your load. The load that he was carrying was a load that he could carry. The only reason why he didn't want to carry it is because he didn't want to carry it. That's it. He didn't want to carry it. And so if he didn't want to carry, it could be one of two things. Either he's lazy and not accountable, not responsible, or he has put too much on his own back. He could be the type of person who has put too much on his own back. And instead of addressing the items in the bag and saying, I can't carry this too much. I can't carry this um, too long and forever. He just decides to take off the whole bag and put it on the other person's back. And the person who had little in his bag did not reassess his bag and reassess the load to his bag. Because whatever was in his bag, he could carry. That means that whatever in his bag was not as light as, as he might think. It was a bag that he could carry. So then when he assumes because he don't have a lot in his bag that he can carry somebody else's bag, he is, he, he is assuming incorrectly. He's assuming incorrectly. Because then you then take on that load. You don't even know what is going on in his bag. And a bag is like a metaphor for life. You don't know what is going on in his life. And you're taking on the responsibility of his bag because he said, oh, it's heavy. It's heavy because you put all that crap in there. You keep um, having dating rotations. You keep moving from place to place. You won't keep a job. You won't keep a place. You uh, keep provoking situations at your job. You won't do what you're supposed to do. You won't live the... You, you won't live a straight life. So therefore, you keep collecting all these um, bad decisions that you're putting in your bag and that you now have to carry. And instead of assessing those bad decisions, you just throw your bag on somebody else. And then what happens in that situation, the person carrying uh, his, his light bag and the heavy bag of the other person, uh, he ends up carrying even more bags for the person because truth be told, if you don't address your bad decision making, you're just going to keep up, uh, keep picking up more bad decisions. So then as they are walking down the road, one person is carrying two bags. The other person is uh, uh, walking footloose and fancy free. And then he continues to pick up more decisions. He continues to pick this up, pick this up, pick this up to the, to the point that he finds out he needs a bag. And then he puts all that in the bag and he just keeps stuffing it and stuffing it and stuffing it. And then he returns to the pattern that he's been using oh this bag is heavy this bag is heavy and like a dummy we still say we still 
say, oh, oh, I can help you with that. Oh, let me help you with that. Oh, I got some time. Oh, yeah, I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm near that, um, th at that store. Yeah, I can pick that up for you. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, you can come live with me. Oh, and I got this extra room. Ain't nobody living with me, girl. You know how I am. I live by myself. Yeah, you can come live with me. Oh, it's okay to let your boyfriend come here. Yeah, he's he's kind of struggling right now, girl. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've been there too with a man. I get it, girl. Um, um, oh, you don't have your rent to that? Well, yeah, I get it. I understand. I know. I know how it goes. M maybe I give you about a couple of months to get yourself together and things like that, right? Um, oh, you got a new dress on? How you get a new dress? I thought you couldn't. I, I thought you didn't have the money. Oh, well, you know, I got some money. I just sometimes I'll kind of save some money. I needed a new dress. I'm trying to get a um, a new job. Oh, you're trying to get a new job? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get a, uh, a new job so, so then I can get my own place. And if the girl, you ain't got to worry about getting your own place. It's okay. Just, you know, get your job and then, you know, pay a little bit rent. You, you don't even have to pay that much, right? Okay. So, so we do all this. We keep carrying their burden. That's on us. That is literally on us. We keep playing ourselves. That's on us. We need to stop that. It is not our burden. We're not saying technically that your issue is not my responsibility. Okay. Because there may come a time you where you may have to help somebody. You may have to let somebody come live with you. And in that time, you're going to have to set the right boundaries. You're going to have to set the right uh, strategies because... If you don't set the right boundaries, uh, they could take over your house and become a squatter in your house, and it's hard to evict them. If they have paid anything, anything at all, or if there is an agreement that, okay, if you do this, you can stay here or whatever, and they tell the judge, and you say, yeah, judge, I did say that, okay, you can't kick them out. If they receive mail at your place, you can't kick them out uh, but through eviction. And then that creates a mental and psychological and spiritual and financial load on you that is not fair, but you have to accept because you let the situation in. You let the homosexual in. And so if you're going to let the homosexual in, then you have to accept all of the, uh, uh, the consequences of the situation. So you cannot bear their burden. You cannot do it. Whatever they need to work out in their life, they got to work it out. And it's going to have to be apart from you because they don't want to listen to you. They don't want to receive your instruction. They don't want to receive your uh, wisdom. They don't want to receive the truth. They don't want to change. So you bearing their burden is, is, is only going to wear you down. You're not going to be able to get anything done that you need to get done in your life. You're not going to be able to accomplish your own uh, 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 dreams. You're going to uh, struggle every time you get home from work because not only is the job going to be stressful because of the situation at the house, but when you come back to the situation at the house, that's even more stressful. You can't go to sleep in that situation. You have no rest with a homosexual squatter. Even if you both are giving each other sex, is something about the situation that is wearing on you that you cannot get. You can be sleeping in the same bed, just finished having sex and good sex at that. And, and something about it still turns your stomach, still turns your mind, still moves you closer and closer and closer into mental insanity. And, and, it's not going to work. Now, as a born-again Christian today, I'm not doing that. I'm not in fornication situations. God has already told me who my husband is going to be, and I'm going to, and I'm in um, a, a healing period prior to that. So when I make these comments, don't think that I am advocating for um, fornication. I'm not advocating for that anymore. But uh, even in a fornication situation, you're taking on their load. There's some sort of sexual issue going on with them that you feel like you got to solve. And there's some sort of sexual issue going on with you that you feel like they got to solve. And you're both coming together soul tied, trying to uh, trying to solve your sexual issues, 
uh, when all you're doing is just repeating patterns, re, uh, extending the situation, the situation is going to become volatile after a while because it's something about the situation that is not good. No matter what you try to do to convince yourself that 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 I'm making this choice to be to, to be with this person in this way, you are not happy. I promise you, you are not happy. And so only that person can truly decide when to let go of that load. So if there's a load like a person who was sexually abused or a person who grew up with a, uh, a mother or a or, or father with an addiction problem or a person uh, who grew up in a toxic dynamic where they are where they were scapegoated um, uh, and had to had to battle with their siblings or something like that. Um, if they were homeless as a child. Right. Or if they had a mean uh primary caregiver who mistreated them, uh, who beat them, uh, who punished them incessantly. If they have all those types of issues, those types of loads, you can't solve that. Do you, is it possible that you may have some insight into it? Yep. Sure. Yeah. Because you might have gone through exactly some of the same things, but eventually you're going to have to turn them over to a resource. You're going to have to turn them over to a person who is actually licensed and skilled at helping people in that way. And that's why I keep saying you are not a resource. You're not a rehabilitation center. You're not a shelter. You're not a, a store. You're not an all convenience store but that they can get all their different uh, things for food and medicine and milk and, and liquor and all that kind of stuff. You cannot do that. You're going to find yourself becoming them. So only that person can choose to move forward. So that means they have to consciously and be intentional about moving forward. It goes back to the platoon. It goes back to the platoon is is when the platoon leader says forward march, you're either going to forward march or you're not. You're either going to advance or you are not. So only that person can choose. That means it's their choice. You cannot choose on their behalf. That's why we need to stop being mothers to grown men. That is on us. That is our fault. We need to expect more from grown men. That you are a grown up, whether you're making 25,000, 30,000, 40,000, if you need to take care of yourself, you do not need to rely on a woman to take care of you. Men need to stop moving in with women, and women need to stop moving in men. And we need to uh, uh, live our lives separately so that we can uh, learn what we need to learn understand what we need to learn, guide ourselves as adults so that we can see the situation through an adult lens. Because when you move in somebody, you're seeing it through a child's lens. When when you move in, when you move with somebody, you're seeing it through a child's lens because you're looking for a parent. So only that person can choose to move forward.